Hello, and welcome to ClearProp TV. In this edit, we focus on the pilot and the information that they have to provide. We hope you enjoy the show. I cannot believe that we are in episode 148 already. That is absolutely Ooh. incredible. And um, I, I just, I love Monday mornings. And we have a huge panel right now, too. So let's go ahead and say hello to everybody in the panel. One of my favorite things to do, of course, is to be able to say hello to all my friends. It's been a week. Oh, my God, it's been a week. Uh, we're going to start with Jim. Uh, Jim Samard from Canada. A, he runs his very own care printing and publishing, and he is a official sponsor for Clear Prop TV and PPG Graphics Paramotor Podcast. What's going on, Mr. Jim, and your maple syrup filling money? Mm. <laughs> well, hey, we got the voting site for the PPG calendar all up and running, so everybody can go and vote for their favorite picks. You can vote for three each day. And that's going to go on until the 12th. So at midnight on the 12th will be the last day to vote. So make sure you go there, ppgcalendar.com, and vote for your favorite pictures. And there's some really cool pictures. Okay. best way to do it is select one, and then you can just go through them all and look at them all in the big size. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. And uh, the 12th is next Monday, so we'll be able to remind you again on the 12th, which is Monday, to make sure you go to Paramotor Calendar or PPG Calendar or Paramotor Calendar? PPGCalendar.com. PPGCalendar.com to make sure you do your voting, at least your last uh, voting. And what's that, what is that going to do for us, Jim? You'll get to choose which pictures are going to be in the calendar this year. Awesome. How many months are going to be in the calendar? Is it going to be 12 months or 18? Or can we have a choice of either or? It's going to be 12. Okay. No um, choice. No choice. Darn it. All right. <laughs> At this time. <laughs> okay. No choice. Uh, 12 uh, months. And it's going to start, what, January? Yes. Starts for January. All right. Um, how do we go ahead and buy those then, Jim? Well, you'll see on that page that there is a spot there for ordered calendars. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. All you do is you tell us how many you want, you give us your address, and we'll print them up, send you a bill. Awesome. Good deal. Well, thank you very much. Uh, also, you do stickers and decals, right? You betcha. I Good old decals. Decal. Everybody know what a decal is? No. Decal. What is a decal? Decal. <laughs> oh, that's, how they, that's how they say decal. decals. They call them decals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the things and that I you thought learn, I was worldly. <laughs> the things that you learn, you know, on a paramotor podcast, right? You learn about a decal. Um, do you have aluminum or do you have aluminum? We have aluminum up here. All right, good deal. I guess that's just Europe. All right, so um, get it up with you at carepp.com. Watch your flying shenanigans at carepg.com and vote on the calendar that's coming up at ppgcalendar.com. Yes. You bet. Thank you. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tim, for being our official sponsor of PPG Grandpa's uh, podcast, ClearProp TV and Paratalk.org. We also got Will Fly from WillFlyPPG.com. What's up, man? Yo, what's going on? It's Monday night. My favorite uh, show on Monday night at 8 p.m. I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that this is the, the number one podcast on Monday nights. <laughs> Indeed it is. And this is the place to be. Absolutely. Now you do a lot of really awesome videos. Have you done any videos and have you done anything with your paramotor just the tip.com? Mm, yes and yes, but mostly still working on the van. I, I, I touch a video every once in a while, do a little little here, a little there, but uh, as soon as the uh, main distraction of the van gets taken care of, I'll be back on it. And what is that actual dot com? It's willflyppg.com or mm -hmm. just go to YouTube and search for Will Fly. What's the paramotor tip one? Just the tip. Oh, oh, paramotor tips. I still haven't done anything with that. Paramotortips.com. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I was talking about is the paramotortips.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really should do something with that. <laughs> I know. I typed in uh, um, I, I typed in just the tip, and uh, that wasn't it. And, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> That's that not me. Want to stay away from that. That was not <laughs> it. And once seen, you cannot unsee. I'm like, oh my god, what am I? What, what I walk in? It was a, it, just a tip was a vaping site for the drip tips for moths. But I guess 
they're gone now. So anyway, thank you very much, Will. If you want to be on the spinning wheel of winning things, make sure you say hi to Will. We're going to spin the wheel once tonight, but I'm not going to tell you when. And uh, he will get you on the spinning wheel of winning things. So thank you very much for doing that in the background. Also, if you have any questions, make sure you say something to Will. And uh, he'll make sure that you get into the spinning wheel of winning things. We also got Paramom USA, our very own Linda Anderson with your pom-poms. Pom-pom it. Hi. There she goes. Hey, everybody. Heard Woo. my voice tonight. I'm all like, eh, head cold, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, you got to show up, right? You know, this is my team right here, and this is where I need to be on Monday night. Thank you all so much for playing with us tonight and everybody listening. Um, it's just awesome to be here. And I'm just going to be kind of chilling a little bit tonight, listening to you guys. Welcome, Shane. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Thank you for the invite. It's going to be a great show. So Absolutely. on with the show. Absolutely. If you want to be on the show or you want to be on the panel, make sure you get up with Linda Anderson. Just go to paramomusa.com. It forwards over to her Facebook page, and that way you can PM her and say, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Bear Motor Podcast. Thank you again, Linda, for everything you do. Bye. We also got Scuba Steve in the house. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. How's it going? Doing good. Any flying lately? <laughs> I want to fly by a bad, but I got that whatever i got whether it's a crack rib broke rib i don't know i want to fly but there's no way i can run right now with that thing well we <laughs> hope that you get better quickly and don't forget your microphone was up by your ear hey steve oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> now now we can see scuba steve well, thank you, very much. you can hear me across the planet anyway without a mic with, with that with that mic right there you're like the loudest one on the panel <laughs> there so you thank you Thank you much for being there. Also got Joshua Marsh, PPG. You can always find him at uh, PPG uh, Josh, or is it Josh PPG? PPG, PPG Josh.com, that's it. And he helps us out too in the background. If you, uh, if you are a guest, he's the one that puts up all the videos and all the pictures and stuff while we're doing this. So give a big thanks to Joshua Marsh in the super chat for doing all the cool stuff that he does. We also got Chris Alt Altmeyer in the background. He's going to be hanging with us. Welcome. Thank you for being there. But of course, it's not about me. It's not about the panel. It's about our guest. Tonight, we're going to be talking with Shane Collard, and he has an amazing story to tell. Uh, when he was flying, he was, he's only been flying for about a year, but his wing collapsed, and he dropped like 100 feet and survived, and he's going to tell us a story tonight. So welcome, Shane. Glad that you made it tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it done. Absolutely. Hey, I, I just had one quick to start off the show. Yeah. I just wanted to, to just shout out to Scuba Steve there. Um, with that cracked rib, my doctor gave me something for my injuries, and it's called triactin. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, no. Is it, oh, is it it's fantastic stuff. I mean, it's it's just a pill form, you know, kind of stuff, but it's called triactin, and it'll take care of pretty much everything that you've got. Oh, I and need so to go get doctor, some, then. <laughs> yeah. Ow, what, ow. what my doctor said is, is try acting like a man and buck up little camper <laughs> <laughs> there you go i knew something was coming out of this you know i just had to go for it <laughs> <laughs> that was a good yeah. one i like that i yeah. know right <laughs> here i was hoping i could go to my doctor and say hey give me some of this try then <laughs> oh i've told i've told a handful of people that and i haven't let them in on the joke i'm like go to your doctor get some try for sure <laughs> <laughs> Is that anything like blinker juice? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot like that. All is right. That, sorry, Steve. Is, is Thank that, you that, for having me, guys. Is, is anything like uh, having that ID 10T? All right. That cool. is a, a lot like that. Favorite form. Yep. That's my favorite form is the ID 10T. Uh, well, yeah. not me personally, but man, they, a lot of people deserve it, right? Here's, here's <laughs> your card. I think that's, I think that's it. Here's your card. Here's your ID 10T. So anyways, for the people out there that don't know Shane, Shane, do us a little bit of a, a favor. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into paramotoring? Um, a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm a dad. I'm, uh, uh, I love adventure. Um, have always had that in my blood. Um, I, I, Took a paragliding class um, in uh, in Salt Lake uh, up on the uh, at the point of the mountain from uh, Cloud Nine, Steve Merritt, Cloud Nine, and then I, uh, I I I had a few hiccups with that. That was about 25 years ago, and and uh, just there were some some hiccups with uh, with that, and felt like I wasn't ready mentally to uh, um, to 
to, to fly. And so I backed out of, of learning how to fly after spending the money on the, the lessons and, uh, and a harness and then utilizing cloud nine's, um, wing in that. And then, uh, have, have lived, I've always had a little itch for, uh, to get back in the air and, um, life has, uh, has put me in a position where I decided to, to take up the, uh, the sport again. And I felt like paramotoring, was um, was an awesome fit for me because I I do a lot of overland travel and to have that motor with me be able to launch you know in in a variety of places instead of you know on on uh, you know beaches wherever you have you know you might with just a para para glider um, I felt like that was a better fit so uh, had a lot of time and searched somebody down or some locals down and uh, jumped into some classes and bought a wing, you know, bought a wing, bought, bought gear within just five minutes and, and off to the races I went. <laughs> awesome. Now you said that in the pre-show that you've been to some fly-ins. What fly-ins have you gone to so far? Um, the most recent one was, um, uh, was hosted by Southern Utah Paramotor um, down here in St. George, Utah. Um, great guys, Brad. Uh, um, he is uh, he's a, he's a stud of a guy, but uh, that one was was one of the most exciting ones that I've been to. And then um, there was another one that I went to. Um, it was a uh, it was down. I forget who hosted that one, but it was another one that was down here. Um, I tried to make it to Salt and Sea, but uh, but my leg just wasn't allowing me to uh, to make that happen. Um, so I didn't didn't get down there. And uh, but I am gonna gonna make sure I make it to uh, um, the uh, the Salt and Sea coming up. I believe in February. Okay, we're looking at some really nice pictures on here. It looks like it's your Instagram for. Yeah, thank you. For those of you that want to see his Instagram page, we do have the links down below. It's underneath his bio, so check out his Instagram. Uh, also, too, we have his Facebook page, so make sure you go over and say hi to him on his Facebook page. You got a lot of interesting pictures on here. Can you see the pictures since you're on your phone right now? Yeah, absolutely. That's my uh, right there. That uh, that picture that you're looking at is one of my trips to uh, was trips to Baja right there, and that's my squirrel. Uh, Rocky, actually, you, yeah. You have no, a pet squirrel. I, I've I've had a multitude. Once you save one squirrel, everybody finds out, and then any squirrel that drops out of the tree, they decide they want to call you to uh, to rescue it and save it. So I've had uh, I've had multiple uh, pet squirrels, and have uh, that last one I re I was able to release, and uh, he's up north and uh, hanging out in our neighborhood. I can always tell it's him because he's fat as shit. <laughs> you're like the you're like the squirrel whisperer oh man they're, they're fun to have but they're a pain they are a pain <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well yeah i i know at the very beginning of this i said that uh you fell out of the sky a hundred feet and hit you're okay but you had lots of injuries. Can we go through what happened that day and uh, uh, kind of walk through what you what was going on in your head? What happened? You know, before, during, and after. You bet. I'll try to I'll try to throw it on uh, the cliff notes because I could probably talk about it for hours on end. But well, we uh, we got an hour podcast, so at least an hour sounds good to me. Yeah. So, um, well, if my wife was watching, or yeah, my wife was watching, she'd be be shaking her head, going. Oh my God, that story again. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the gist of it is, is I chose to to uh, to fly um, the night before. I checked checked a handful of uh, of radars and spots um, to assure you know it's October down here. It's prime flying weather. Um, we do have kind of some tumultuous you know winds that can pop up, and so you have to always be uh, be weary of those. Um, but I checked the night before. I checked in the morning of. I woke up a little bit late. Um, but our, our normal fly time down here is, is anywhere from, from, you know, midsummer, you try to reach out a little, little early in the 637 range. Um, but, uh, this time of year, it's, it's an eight o'clock, you know, eight o'clock, no problem, um, launch. And, um, so I chose to fly. I took off from a, uh, from, uh, actually not even, I chose to, to take off from a parking lot, um, that, you know, because I had nil wind um at me and I was like okay well no big deal I'll just park my truck and and uh and fire it up and 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 go and so it was a, a it was actually a road 
and a uh, the warehouses were going up, so it was pretty wide open. Um, and I, I hit right before launch. I took a phone call where my I, I live um, down here in southern Utah. I live fairly close to um, it's called the Sand Sand Hollow um, and Sand Dunes and and a lake in that. And so um, I took a phone call from my uh, his name is Luke Weiss and. Uh, um, he was one of my son, my 18 year old son, one of his friends that comes down down here quite frequently by himself to uh, to um, practice motocross and or desert cross. And so he called me and said, oh, Shane, I'm, I got my truck stuck. Can you come uh, come try to get me out with uh, with your overland truck? And I'm like, well, I, I told him, I said, I'll, I'll do it. But uh, um, I'm, I'm taking off right now. And so. I took off, um, I started flying, and then I ended up choosing to circle around to go to the Sand Hollow area where, where he was uh, stuck at, where I knew he was stuck, um, and get an aerial view to try to find him so that I could, um, you know, I could creep my truck back wherever he was. There's a lot of ins and outs going up into the sand dunes there. And uh, I, so I just wanted to find the easiest route to get to him fast um, after I landed and uh, ended up, you know, getting bumped around just a little bit on my way over there after about uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes in the air, um, getting bumped around a little bit. Um, no, you know, no problem, nothing, nothing too scary. Um, I crossed over, over, a, you know, a, a housing development where I was thinking, okay, those bumps, you know, may just be, uh, you know, a thermal or something, you know, from that dropped down onto the lake and the lake was dead calm. Um, and and uh, came up and over the dam and uh, got about maybe I don't know it's probably probably at least a good quarter mile um, away from the from where I, I crossed the dam quarter mile to maybe even a half mile um, and I noticed I looked down and I noticed that my ground speed was was crazy fast for me crazy fast um, which was was like probably in the the fifty mile an hour zone. Um, and so I dipped down low, I, I went up high, um, and just to see where I was, I was, I was getting bumped with that, um, and trying to, trying to think my way out of, uh, hey, out of the way, um, think my way out of, uh, of what I was going to do and how I was going to handle it. Um, and then ended up getting, getting to be about 150, 200 feet, right in that range, um, of altitude and, uh, and making a hard full throttle right turn because I had a, I had a tailwind, and so I pulled into the into it, and now I had a uh, a headwind that was just allowing me to barely creep, um, and I was getting bumped uh, again. I dropped down, you know, tried tried to drop down low, and I wasn't getting getting uh, real far out, oh, lady, um, and uh, um, I had a golf course in front of me. I I my my uh, my intent was to drop down on the golf course, one of the links there, and uh, and just land it, pack up, and 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 get out of there. No big deal. Um, and I missed missed the last link, and so I had a lot of desert in front of me, and um, and ended up uh, saying, okay, well, I'll just I'll just land in the desert. And uh, so I eased off the throttle a little bit, trying to drop in in elevation, and um, noticed that I wasn't dropping. And so I just kind of kept an easy throttle on, but I was getting bumped and I got about 200 yards past, um, you know, into the desert and I got hit with what I want to call an upward rotor because at the same time that, I mean, I got hit to a point where, uh, where I felt like I was in upward free fall and looked up to see my wing a hundred percent collapsed and, and, uh, and lines coming in my face. And before the lines hit my face, because I had a split second to think, I had thrown the, the throttle to try to push me out of it and, and possibly reinflate along with um, pulling my brakes to try to, uh, to try to, you know, reinflate that way in some fashion. And, and at that point in time, I was already dropping and, uh, and um, just, I, you know, split second, I, I, uh, I had to, I had to, you know, basically, I, I I knew I was hitting the ground, and so I uh, I I literally, as soon as I done, I, I pumped my brakes. I looked down; the ground was coming quick. I killed my motor, brought up my my appendages in, and uh, and just 
took the hit. Out. Sorry. Dog's bugging me. She wants to play. <laughs> totally understand. My dog always wants to play. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Tell us what you broke again. So uh, my list of broken bones were uh, um, my, my left radius and ulna dislocated the elbow, um, broken uh, left femur, uh, broken hip, four ribs on the left side, one rib on the right side, um, broken uh, scapula, one thoracic vertebra, um, and contused lungs, liver, and kidney. Holy smokes. It was, uh, yeah, it was crazy. So, and this was October of last year? October, yeah, of uh, 21. So have you flown since then? Or what have you done this last year? How long did it take to heal? I have. um, I I was only, you know, this is crazy, but I kept breaking. The funny portion of it is, I guess, is they were giving me so much drugs um, right about that point right there after my leg uh, dropped down from being so swollen, I, I ended up getting up and, uh, and putting weight on it and rolling myself around. Um, but I, uh, I ended up, uh, I, I was so high from the drugs and everything else that um, I ended up breaking out of the hospital three separate times. So truthfully, I only spent 12 days in the hospital in total. Oh, because did- I kept breaking out. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the doctor exactly. ride on your leg or was that your wife i'm just wondering because you know the some yes doctor, did she yeah the yes you know because yeah, they put no, yes and no yeah that's that's the surgeon oh the, the surgeon. surgeon did it okay yeah, i know some some wives will go in there and put no you know don't 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 mess with this leg it's the other one <laughs> yeah no that was the doctor that was the surgeon um that uh that had gone in and uh marked that up so my, my that, leg was that break was massive. That was something serious. Yeah, that looked bad. So she, you know, it was bad, but, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was another pilot from down here. Literally, um, a year earlier, he did the same thing. Um, his name is Jeff Hunt. He's a he's another pilot from down here, and I've I've only got to meet him once, but um, a, a great guy. But he, man, he got the bad end of the stick. He he got a, the same femur break. But he is still fighting, um, unfortunately, with that uh, that break because mine was really clean and his his was pretty broken up there. Um, and so, I mean, I, like I said earlier, I've got to be insanely thankful for everything that happened and and that I'm back on my feet and and back flying and back, you know, enjoying enjoying my life. You know, at about eighty percent of uh, of what I did previous to the the accident so shane you fell from about 100 feet about about, uh, just shy of like 90 feet okay and that was that was based on my 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 air uh my my controller there that's kind of said this and then a straight line to the ground okay and i've seen something like this happen uh in person uh uh, maybe two years ago now and (laughs) Very similar. Uh, he was turning. He, he was uh, clo- about the same height, close to the ground. And as soon as he turned, it, you know, as soon as he turned upwind is when the collapse took place. And uh, pretty much the same, similar injuries, you know, not quite as severe as yours, but uh, there were some similarities. So, I mean, when something like this happens, obviously it's got to affect your you know, how you think about flying, maybe rethink things or, or whatever. So I guess the question is, how long after this happened, did you want to fly? And then how long was it that you, it took between you actually flying? I know you said you flew. So how long, what was the time in between? That's a great question. Um, so I, I mean, I had visions of grandeur. I've always been a, a, Hey, let's do it. Let's, let's get after this shit. Let's make it happen today. And so I think uh, uh, Brad Brad teased me because I I think I quoted a six week time frame after my accident that I was going to be back flying, um, yeah. and uh, and everybody laughed at that and you know but I was serious and so um, I had visions of grandeur but uh, um, I think it was uh, it was just just at the six month mark 
that I actually got back into the air. Um, and it's because my, my body was, I felt my body was strong enough. I think at that six week, if my body felt strong enough, my mind would have let me go up. Um, but, uh, but it was really close to that six month mark where, where I, uh, I ended up making it happen with a limp in my leg and with pain in my leg and, and, uh, you know, that 280, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm in love with it, but uh, that tornado, but um, with my, my size, it's got a lot of power. And so I don't have to take a, a ton of steps in order to, uh, to get off the ground, even with nil wind. Um, and so, um, but it, it's, it's a little crazy because I, previous to this, I, I forgot what fear was. Um, and now that I'm back in the air, I've got a very, very healthy, healthy, healthy um, fear. Um, every bump scares me still to this minute. I mean, he, he, right before October, when I left, I, I was flying, trying to get my my feet wet, and my you know, so to speak, flying a, a lot more than than what I I had normally. Um, and right before my my October Egypt trip, uh, I I ended up. Uh, it was only maybe I, I was having problems. I sent you guys a video, but uh, um, one of the videos that I sent was, I don't know if you saw it, but was a dark um, video for most of it. And then, um, but I had a motor out like the week before as I was crossing some, some, uh, some big uh, sandstone walls down here in Snow Canyon. I was right above them. And I ended up having like my third motor out after my accident. Um, my motor just was giving me problems. And so I've gained a very much a very healthy um, fear of being up in the air and have, have it's, it's widened my vision of how I'm flying, I, how I fly and, and what to do and what not to do. And, and, uh, um, so you, and you obviously just, are flying more cautious now. Do you think that since October, when you started back flying again, that you've relaxed any or every day that you fly now, you still have that same jitter feeling like uh, something could happen at any second. I, I finally, so, so even with the motor outs before October, um, it was only that, that few weeks ahead of that was the first time that I felt myself relax and enjoy the flight again. I'm not, I, I am, a, I'm definitely a worse pilot. Um, than I was before because I'm a lot more rigid and my turns, you know, um, my turns are a lot uh, are a lot less aggressive. Um, I was doing some fairly awesome wingovers, you know, some some fun wingovers and and things like that before. Um, now I'm not doing it. That picture right there that you just saw was the only picture I've got of me being on the ground, and that's my "Am I going to die?" face because my helmet got knocked off <laughs> and I had my GoPro on there. And for some reason, I was worried about that my battery was going to die on my GoPro. So I reached over and, and I, I hit the, uh, the button and <laughs> I was looking at the button. <laughs> so that was the only picture of me on the ground right there from my GoPro. I'm sure people are wondering, it's like, do you have footage? I mean, you, you, I, you fly with a GoPro. I, I wish I did. I, I like I, I I had said earlier. I filmed going over the water because there was a huge flock of ducks um, that were, you know, I was I was a, a couple of feet off the water of the lake, and there were ducks in front of me, and I wasn't changing course. You know, I was just gonna let them let them be there, and uh, so I've got a little bit of footage there. And then as soon as I crossed the dam, I felt like it was just boring footage, and and was concerned about my battery and concerned about uh, you know the the amount of uh, video the GoPro was taking, and so I it reached up and clicked the video off. So did you land in the sand dunes? I landed in the desert, so um, which has sand. It's covered in sand, sage, and rocks. Okay, so was so, it pretty hard? No, it was. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's sand, you know, it's sand and uh, and uh, desert, and so um, I mean, it definitely could have been a lot worse. I, I didn't hit cement. I didn't hit uh, hit that. I hit I hit a patch of sand, and uh, and uh, you know, 
just that some some sand and rock how did you land um you know this is a crazy thing too um and it was this is kind of kind of interestingly crazy i guess on on how mind works but my brothers and i we had some ridiculous talk i've got two older brothers um and we had some ridiculous talk and this is probably 25 30 years ago of how to land if you ever my my brother is a uh is a uh, uh, pilot on American Airlines, and we had this conversation that a long time ago. That um, that how would you land if you had to jump out of a plane so that you would have the least amount of impact on your body? Because if you land straight like this, you're just going to crush everything. But if you land flat this way, you're going to still die. And and we for some reason we came up with that you've got to land sideways like this so that your body folds and takes the impact and that was probably your highest probability and for some reason that i have no idea i haven't even thought about that throughout, throughout paragliding or paramotoring but for some reason that went in my head which led me to go like this with my body from being this way to bring to killing my motor and bringing me my arms in and taking a shoulder basically to take that hit and that's how I landed. That's that's I landed exactly like this. My cage took took a you know my cage uh, took a big hit, and uh, everything on the left side well, of my body. Good for took- you for not for not giving up after something like that. I you know I know each person's different, and some people that if they have a crash like that, they're they're done. You know I'm done with the sport. You know good for you for getting back out there and just basically conquering your fear now because after that happens you know you it instills in your mind you know hey this can happen but that can happen anywhere you know motorcycle wreck car crash so you know good for you though yeah i've got a a scenario for that if if you're going to be dumb you better be tough yes (laughs) (laughs) you know they say that if, if if you don't have a video or if you didn't get video of something that it didn't happen but yeah. I think with all your injuries, we're going to give you a pass on this one. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. We got pictures of him with his broke. We got x-rays and everything. He's good. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, no, really, the, I, I did have a question, though, because I was kind of thinking back. So this happened in the morning, you said, right around 8 a.m.? It, it did, yeah. Um, eight, eight, and, eight, eight, I think I took off at just like, slightly like after 8. And then what would you say the temperature was, roughly? Hmm. I I'll be honest with you. I, I don't, I would probably say in the sixties, maybe, maybe okay. low sixties, 59 okay. to then, 60. And then sky condition, like sky cover. Was it clear? Clear. Okay. Clear. And how high are you above sea level? Where 4, you are? 4,000. Do you know what the winds were at the surface? winds winds were were projected in everything that i saw there was nothing over six mile an hour was that that was the surface did you check winds aloft also yeah um yes i did if i yeah i mean i generally do well I, so, yeah i mean so i, 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 I guess yeah, i mean it wasn't to, supposed to, to put the puzzle together a little bit yeah i i have uh i've thrown it out to the param like right when it happened i threw it out to the the paramotor community. Um, one guy down here, his name is Vanya. Um, he's actually self-taught. Um, he's with Southern Utah Paramotor. He he instantly reached out to me and was such a cool guy. Um, he he is very intellectual. Where I'm very like, let's just do it, you know, kind of guy. And so um, I really appreciated him calling and he he researched some stuff and we. We, we talked about it, you know, in, in, in depth to try to find out, well, man, was it an upward rotor from this? Because there was a, there, I, I went in between this valley that's kind of known for, um, for some shitty winds. Um, but again, man, it was October and, and it wasn't supposed to, there, there weren't supposed to be winds that day. Um, and here's, a, here's another kind of weird fact, um, or, or I guess not a weird fact, but, um, I, I happen to, I don't dive into all of the negativity of, hey, man, this guy crashed and, you know, this guy hit a wall and this guy died. You know, I, I, I try, you know, I, I have emotional care for that and, and hate to see it, but I don't want to 
dive into it. I, I don't like the negativity, but I happened to see like two days ago, um, a article of, of a guy that died, a paramotorist that died here in our community um, that hit the ground. And he was literally within less than a mile of where I was in, up in that same, same area. Um, which was a little weird because he was in 2019. Jeff was in, he, this other guy was, um, I believe he was 2020 and then I was 21. So one a year kind of in this vicinity of, of I don't know. So anyways, I, 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 I wish I, I wish I could pinpoint it, but I'm not going to rule out. I, you know, I originally said, oh man, this upward rotor wind hit me and my wing collapsed and it was the wind's fault. And I wanted to point the direction in that regard. But then I got up in the air and I'm like, I'm getting bumped and I'm going, ah, ah, you know, pulling, pulling my brakes as hard as I can, you know, to try to, try to, uh, you know, just feel it. And I'm thinking, I, I kind of ran that back through my head and said, Maybe that's what you did when you were getting bumped around and you caused your own collapse. I know that we talked about this on the pre-show. Um, yeah. I already know the answer. Did you have a reserve and have you ever taken an SIV course? I did have a reserve. Um, and uh, I just to clarify on that one, I, you know, I, I, I guess my train of thought was instead of my, I guess my habit, should I say, um, was I, I, I've never practiced uh, throwing reserve, um, never at all. I just had it there hoping that I never had to use it kind of thing. And so that's, that's my uh, negligence without a doubt. Um, so I had one, but, and in my accident, I was just, just, you know, it was, it was react to try to save it. And as soon as I, felt that I wasn't able to save it I was hitting the ground um and so that was a little tough now that that video right there was uh, just shortly after my uh um uh, motor out over those cliffs to the right right there um anyways but uh, no I have not taken a class um it is on my radar to uh, to take one I I feel like that that kind of practice is is just I, 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 I couldn't imagine, you know, having that type of, of education um, available to me and not, and, and wanting to stay in the sport and not, uh, not taking advantage of it. I mean, that's that to me, you know, I, I keep thinking of it. That, yeah, I had a reserve, but I had never prepped to, to throw it, you know, yeah. was I even strong enough to pull it out and throw it, you know? Did you think about it? Uh, no. Did you have time? <laughs> no, zero. Not even, not even a, not even a blink of an eye did I have it. I had time. I had time enough to go like this, look up, see it, hit my throttle at the same exact time because I saw lines coming in my face, and my reaction was, "Don't get those lines in your prop. Throttle out of it and try to try to you know push that way and and open it up." And at the same time, I was grabbing those brakes and yanking down on those brakes with a full throttle. And I saw nothing. And I went from this, this, to looking down to see the ground coming at me, to this. And I was hitting. It's all away. Yeah, I, mean, I, wish, I, I wish I had a better explanation, a more educated explanation. But unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I think we got a bunch of questions for you in the chat, Will. Yeah, so uh, Bill H says, did you report the accident to the US PPA database? No. Yeah, I that's felt like awesome. Uh, what was that? Um, I, I'll be 100% on, honest here. I mean, again, this is part of my negligence as a new pilot. I wouldn't even have thought to do that. Yeah, well, and it's 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 something we've talked about um, on a previous, uh, actually last Tuesday. But uh, the US PPA database of incidents and accidents is basically an anonymous way to report to the community what happened and and you know the outcome and what you think caused it. The the whole works, and it allows them to kind of get an idea of you know the ten the trends of accidents and. Uh, 
So yeah, I, I, I definitely I, I, encourage you to do that. It's a really yeah. easy form to fill out. I, too. I, I, I've never even heard of that. Um, and you know, again, I, I, I'm a new pilot and uh, have been kind of out of it <laughs> for, I've been more rehabbing in the last uh, 13 months. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's crucial that to, to I would have, I would love to know, I would give anything to have had a GoPro on or a 360 to be able to, to tell me exactly, did you cause this shame? You know, did you cause your own collapse? What did you do wrong so that you could have got yourself out of it, even at, at low elevation like that? I really well, think I that sure after you have. take, after you take an SIV course, I think you'll be able to come back and tell us in more depth what you really think happened because when you go to an SIV course you collapse your wing yeah and you'll be able to see what happens when it uncollapses and uh, one of the things that we're taught is that if you do have a wing collapse is that you pull your A's down you recollapse it then you let it up and it opens up for you and we've done that a couple of times in the SIV class so you yeah. were you were what a year into paramotoring when this happened? Correct. Would just is yeah. I mean, I would even say less than a year when that. But you also had, happened. but you also had paragliding experience before. Uh, I had I had minor paragliding experience. I had been, um, like I said, I, I took a paragliding uh, uh, um, course up in in uh, Salt Lake at uh, the point of the mountain and. Uh, um, Felt like at that point in time, um, I watched and had a few things happen to me um, that that were so obvious that I just felt I, I looked at myself and I said, you're mentally not ready to do this sport. And so I bowed out of it. Okay. John Wayne wants to know if it's possible that the lines did get caught in the prop or hung up on something. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you that. Um, I know that my lines um, n were not cut, um, but I definitely had to replace um, the majority portion of my lines on my left side, which I mean, correlates to, to a lot of them, but I replaced a lot of my lines, but none of them were, were cut completely. Um, my, I have a three blade prop um, and it, it, uh, it, it, I only had to replace one blade out of the three from snapping. The other two didn't even touch. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah. I, I assume that you sent your wing to Cloud9 since that was in your description about Cloud9? I sent, no, I did not. Where did you send your wing to to get it checked after the accident? I didn't. <laughs> it's a it was a brand new wing um i i had um i i inspected it um with uh with you know the the people down here who i feel are are the experts um and then in regards to the lines themselves i ordered the lines and uh and replaced them with somebody that had already that that knew how to you know specifically do it and we, we took the time to teach me Okay, interesting. Um, was there any more questions in the super chat that we missed, Will? You know, the only other one that I could think of is uh, we've already covered your gear. You fly in the tornado, right? And uh, mm -hmm. your 28 meter, but what were your number of flights when this occurred, roughly? Um, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people are, or a lot of people will check that list off. Um, I'm, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I enjoy the flight. I don't, I don't care about the, uh, the number of flights, whether it's a five minute flight or, uh, or, you know, a, a two hour cross, you know, flight. Um, but I bet you, um, well, let me put it this way. I had under, under 30 hours. No, under 35 hours is what it was, or like 32 two hours because when I got back um, back in the saddle my my hours only showed 32 hours or you know right in that range so I mean 30 or less flights let's let's go one you know hour flights yeah has was, there been any other incidents in that particular area similar uh, in in this ge geographical area 
Yeah. In, in uh, regards where, to where, yeah, where the where your accident took place, have there been similar situations? Yeah, I mean, like I like I said earlier, um, twenty nineteen, there was a pilot that you know crossing the the dunes, um, I, and I just saw this this article, um, but 20, 2019, there was a death um, from a pilot, unfortunately, that that um, died, you know, less than a mile away from where I went down. Oh, I, and I didn't realize it was the same. Okay. So that's the same location. Yeah. Less than a mile from where I went down, there was a, I, I and I happened to see this from reading news reports and it had a, 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 a plat map, like a Google plat map. And it said, you know, site of accident. And I looked at it in regards to where my accident was. And I would probably say that it's definitely less than a mile away. Um, and there's nothing, nothing out there. It's sand dunes and, and desert. Um, and then um, this other gentleman, Jeff, um, he had a, had another accident, which was geographically in the same St. George area, if you would, St. George, Washington area. I mean, as, as the, as the paramotor flies, probably uh, a nine mile, um, a nine mile, uh, 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 straight line to where he uh, went down, and he luckily survived. So those are wow. those are the, the the few that I know. Well, I take it back. There's another guy that uh, another um, gentleman um, just yesterday went down here. I don't I don't know if uh, you guys in the community have heard about that yet, but uh, um, there was a a gentleman that uh, just. Man, I was I was scared that it was a a, a good friend of mine, um, that that it was him because we live right next to this gorge called the Virgin River Gorge, and um, there was a pilot. You know, don't don't one hundred percent quote me on this one, and I won't mention a name, um, but um, he, I'm I'm told that he was flying a speed wing and got into that he was a very experienced para glider pilot. And was was paramotoring and and was on a speed wing. Um, I don't even know yet exactly where he he was. I'm told by EMS that he was in this one area um, near the gorge um, where we're at, which is only five six miles from from where I'm at. Um, and he uh, he went down uh, yesterday with, uh, with and he's got spinal inter- injuries. Um, they thought that he was paralyzed for a minute there, but it was just numbness. And um, but he's he's got some some broken bones. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's been a handful of injuries, and you know here. I mean, like I said, the weird coincidence was just yesterday. So yeah, so oh, wow. prayers went out to that that guy. He he got uh, he got uh, um, he he was sent here to Dixie Regional uh, Hospital. And then my understanding is, and again, don't quote me on it, that he got transferred by helicopter to um, to Las Vegas, to a hospital in Las Vegas that could better take take care of him. Okay. But he's alive, and I know he's not paralyzed. Let's let's uh, let's you know throw the throw the hands up for that. Yeah, that, that's really good, <laughs> really good to hear. Yeah. I was I was wondering though about your situation you landed you broken legs how did you get rescued or get to the hospital like what happened after the accident um so kind of funny because i was flying alone um i did have my phone on me and i also had a an emergency beacon on me um that that i had but um so i i hit the ground um, and I must have passed out. I must have uh, been knocked out in some fashion because I woke up um, and I, I remember myself gr- groaning and really trying to breathe hard like I was I was going, Ugh! you know, like like trying to breathe and groan. And I was trying my damnedest to get like situated and and rolled around enough to um, to unhook my harness. But I was in, a, I, I remember a lot of pain as I would try to move. Um, and so I ended up taking my phone out um, and calling, instead of calling EMS, I called um, here at my house. That I, I had a Washington sheriff living with me and um, he was, he had, he had, 
he was moving from here in St. George or the, the hurricane area um, to Texas. And so he was a little bit in between houses. His family was back there and, um, and he was living here with me. And so I said, okay, well, I know if I call this guy, he will know exactly where I'm at. And so I chose to call him first instead of dialing 911, which again, you know, I'm an idiot. But uh, I would I, I, I probably would have called my wife, too, before I called 911. So, I mean, yeah. I understand. I mean, yeah, so <laughs> exactly. But I so I called him and he's like, Shane, you know, his name's Dave Krause. And, I, and so I called him and uh, and uh, he said, Shane, he says, I left yesterday to go to Texas. And so I'm in Texas. Do you need me to call 911 for you? And I'm like, oh, no, no big deal. And I, this was after I had done a you know, my own EMS self-assessment and trying to, trying to, you know, know, knowing I need, needed help, but also knowing that I had a conscious mind and I wasn't bleeding out, you know, I didn't feel like I was, I was paralyzed or anything like that. Um, so he called or I called, I was on the phone with him and then maybe I was on the phone with him for two minutes at, at most. And then all of a sudden I poked my head up like this and this, golden doodle comes running over to me and is licking my face and i'm like oh you're a good boy oh you're a good boy and um, and i see its owner come running at me and um and he goes are you all right and he's got his phone up and i said no no i'm totally fine and he goes <laughs> really? he goes you're not fine <laughs> I remember him screaming at me, you're not fine. I'm calling 911. I said, and I tried, it was funny because he was panicking a little bit. And I, I felt like I had my, my wits about me enough. And he, I, I, I had to physically calm him down because he was looking at me like, oh my God, this guy is going to, you know, this guy's going to die. But um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, a, it was slightly amusing. He was, he was a hell of a guy too. He, he ended up, uh, sending me a get well he was having a party down here and there was like 20 30 people at his party and ends up sending me a, a, a get well video from everybody in the party and was was a real good, great guy so um he he ended up calling 911 and uh they they stayed with me they showed up and uh um i was a real asshole for some reason they're wanting to you know i had a, a ghost whisper a jacket like this on um, and, uh, I, I'm like, God, this is a $300 jacket. Don't cut it. You know, I was telling him that's not to cut it. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we can do this. I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And, and had him pull my arm out, you know, this way. And, and I slid it out this way. Cause this was a broken arm. And, um, and then they hit me, hit me full in morphine and I'm laying on my back on the, on the backboard with the, with the C collar on. And I, I'm sitting there trying to meditate. And just just trying to let them do their jobs after they got you know got me you know out of my harness and and on the the backboard and um, and I happened to hear the hear the heli coming in and I went like this I I looked up and and I saw the heli you know kind of coming coming this way at high altitude and I said I looked over at the the main paramed and I said is that heli for me are they coming for me and he says, yeah. I said, no, nah, call, call it off. I said, we don't, I don't, we don't need, I said, I'm good. I said, we don't, <laughs> we, don't, we, don't we, I don't need a heli, you know? And I'm thinking, I'm not paying for that. You know? yeah. And Did they offer so, you any of that medicine so, you were talking about? I, I, I literally, I literally called off my own heli ride and made these, <laughs> these like six guys tout my you know carry my fat ass out on the backboard they literally had to put me back down because they were walking through sand and six of them carrying me <laughs> you didn't so, you didn't you didn't go on the helicopter no they put me i yeah. i called i called it off and and they did what i said and uh and hauled my ass out on a on a backboard and uh, put me in the ambulance well, you made them work for their money. That's nice. I really did. <laughs> I, mean, I, wow. I really did. I, I was, yeah, there, there was some weird stuff going on in my head, apparently. 
Well, I don't know. I think I probably would have been in the same state of, I've done stupid things like that. No, 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 I'm not paying for that. There's no way. That's how cheap I I am, I guess. And then I find out it was free. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So dumb, but I, and then my son's, my son, I, I had called my son. He was down here with his friend. And uh, I, I guess some more of the amusing parts is that they had, once they got on scene, they were, you know, they, he drove his truck back. I'm like, okay, so grab my, grab my wing and grab my motor, make sure that you uh, cover everything up and, and stuff my wing so that it doesn't get ripped. And, you know, was telling them how to do everything instead of just, you know, going with it. And they're going like this. They're taking selfies for their social media that says dead dad. And, you know, <laughs> so it was my son and, and one of his friends and they met me at the hospital and I'm all, you know, I'm lined up with everything. And, and I'm, you know, I'm finally coming to my faculties and, and understanding how, how badly hurt I was. And, uh, and, this one of my sons who was there they're both this son was 17 and he was down here riding motorcycles with a buddy of his um that that um friend of his was taking selfies with me in the background and he's like oh you know drew's dad's gonna you know is dying and for father's day for father's day this year um in his graphic arts class they built they uh, he created a mug for me that uh, was a picture of me in the hospital with Jared going, ah, clicking. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, uh, uh, Fly Baby Fly PPG said, um, I can't see where it was, but he said something about much respect for your brother. Um, much respect. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I'm good. Just send the helicopter back. Just, just yeah, carry no up. problem. Get out, get rid of it. That's and it, awesome. I, I could see it in the I could see it in the paramed's face. Like you effer, you wouldn't let me cut your coat. Well, first of all, <laughs> hey Shane, what was that? What was the name of that medication you were talk, talking about earlier? Oh, oh, the uh, the one that got me triactin. It's triactin. Yeah, triactin. Yeah. <laughs> I took a lot of that apparently. <laughs> wow. So you guys, you know, if you ever if you, you always make sure you have some triactin with you. Yep. If you're gonna it comes have, in all sorts of forms. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard of some really good stuff. Yep. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. Uh Will, did we miss any uh questions in the super chat? Or we there was uh oh, yeah, sorry. well <laughs> Yeah, Fly Baby Fly was wanting to know, um, did did you did you maintain pressure on the lines? Which obviously you if you took a collapse, I mean I guess that's what he's I, asking. I, I, I probably, assume... probably meant is there pressure on the brakes, but he said, you know, Shane said he looked up and you know he was being pulled up by this draft and he looked up and the wing was coming down with all the lines dripping on top of them like that. So I can't imagine I mean, it, it must have it must have pulled you up so quick and then stopped. You kept on coming up. I mean, it, it felt like I I got hit with. I mean, it felt like boom, like instantly just got lifted, like my my spine, you know, like getting getting like a roller coaster ride almost, where you get get pushed down into your seat with the G's. It felt like I got lifted so fast, and I was like, "What?" and looked up, and that's all I saw. I, I saw the wing you, wing folded tacoed and and center taco and then and i had lines coming at me in my face and felt kind of that ah oh, euphoria right so that's when you killed the motor right you you that, saw the wings that that right there was when i actually floored the motor before oh, i had floored. those 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 in my face and tried to tried to pull out of it and pump my brakes at the same time and it was like no avail i i, I spun is what i did and uh be when you cut the lines there i'm guessing it, they were yeah, already almost in your face and then hit the gas you probably cut the lines then i'm, I'm yeah, guessing I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that too because also too you have that torque and if you're if you're up like this and you gun it you're gonna you know um, have that torque effect Spin. at that angle yeah yep. wow you are so lucky my friend to be alive and Beautiful. telling us your story i'm just just 
crazy lucky. Yeah. But I celebrated. So the good news, just super quick, because I know you know it's probably coming to an end here, but super quick. I, uh, I got myself to a point where, you know, one of the reasons why I, I got into the sport was to literally, I saw one of the videos of, of, uh, of people flying over the pyramids I've, I, and I adventure travel quite a bit. I've done a lot of, a lot of fun things in my life. Um, and that was one of the reasons. And, and I, I, I ended up over my anniversary of my crash, got to Egypt and got to fly over the pyramids and the Nile and, uh, Luxor and Minya, you know, all, all sorts of, all of that entire trip with, uh, with sky one. Yeah. Right there. So oh, that's that, cool. That, that was in October of this year. I, I, I rode a motorcycle an adventure motorcycle, um, with another friend of mine, um, from Alexandria all the way down into, into Luxor and the Suez canal for the first 10 days, and then flew from Luxor back to Cairo to meet up with all of the paramotor so, motor guys. When you flew in Egypt over the pyramids and stuff, was that on your own equipment or did you rent some equipment over there? Or? No, I was too late to, to rent equipment and I'm really happy I didn't because it's, it's kind of jank, janky over there. But uh, um, I, uh, I ended up packing my, everything of my own over there. Oh, wow. I'd be scared to put my stuff on a plane, but okay. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I was too, <laughs> but uh but I, I, you know, I, I learned a lot from doing it and uh, it was a pain in the butt coming back um, because, you know, it was, I had to unpack and repack and, and do all these things to get through each security checkpoint. Um, and I was tired. My, you know, my limbs are tired. My limbs are, are, are still insanely weak um, from the wreck, but uh, um it, it was well worth taking my own gear because when you get over there to do that trip, you're, you have a limited amount of time that you can be in the air. So they give you, if you've rented a machine, they give you five liters and you can basically go up in the air for about a half an hour, do, you know, get some cool pictures and then come back and land. And then somebody else takes your wing, takes the motor and wing out and goes where I, you know, I can buy as much gas as I wanted and, and fly as long as I wanted. Um, over there with my own equipment. There's one more question uh, there, Sean. See, it was uh, Para Ninja wanted to know how sharp and deep the dunes were. Yeah, and that's they, it. Yeah, I, I remember that. Okay. Sharp and deep the dunes. Tell me. Oh, I guess like, how like, tall were the dunes? Right. Was so, it was so, it just, so was so it I kind of flat like the beach, or was it like really? No, dune? no, they're 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 definitely so in, in that area. Should I say? There, they are some steeper, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a, a huge expanse of massive amount of dunes. Are you talking, I apologize. He's talking you, about the you, accident, the accident. accident? Okay. Yes. So the accident, that's, that's where I was going. So it's, it's, it's that area has dunes that are tall and steep. The area does, but I was, I wasn't over those dunes. I, th this whole, this whole geographical area is a desert and anywhere you go, here within a 30 mile you know area there's sand and so it can be flat sand and it can have dunes in certain areas so so that um to answer the question i was at least you know a mile uh, maybe less um away from from may maybe a half a mile from any significant dune i i was going towards the set but then I made that right hand turn and started coming back and going away from them to the flat golf course area, you know, which sand is there, but not dunes. It's just flat desert. I hope that answers it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're still trying to figure out what happened. I mean, that just sounds strange, especially if somebody else in the same area had the same thing. I wonder uh, how, what, I mean, it sounds like a, be cloud suck but you said there's no clouds you weren't up to cloud base no you know? um, there, there, i i so brad, brad from southern utah paramotor he he and vanya um he looked at it and and you know they're they're both i trust both of them um with the amount of research that they've done and there is a cliff line that it that was i'll uh, maybe maybe a, a quarter of a mile to my left. Um, and then you've got the dam right there. And so I was kind of in this funnel of desert right there that I didn't really have a whole lot of choice of, of going through. 
And so our thought was, or their thought was, was that that it there's a it, it's like a valley, and then on this on this side, it's a it's a raised um, a, a a raised plate, um, meaning like plate tectonics kind of stuff. So it's a raised plate like a cliff line that goes like this, and so and then it goes into desert over here, and then the lake way over here. And so the thought was was that 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 cliff line in that valley right there, which is a, is quite tumultuous right there, um, that that wind came in and, uh, and, and popped me in some fashion. You, you were in the Utah Triangle. Cause I was, I was thinking, you know, you got the Bermuda Triangle, you were in the Utah. I can't believe I was thinking that in my head. Then Plainfield said, oh yeah, he's in the Utah Bermuda Triangle. And I was like, I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I see, John, <laughs> I see John Wayne also said too accelerated prop may have caught the loose lines and prevented inflation uh, because you are flying the ozone spider 3 28 meter and I've flown a, a spider before and I've uh, flown a roadster which is the heavier cousin of the spider and those things they open up so quick I mean I went yeah, to an SIV almost done. sorry go ahead Oh, sorry. So, um, so I know that they open up pretty quick. So I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still lost at, at, at what possibly could happen. Uh, I guess we'll never know, but, uh, the big thing to think about is that you are safe and you are flying again. So definitely thank God you're okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful to all the people that, that helped me through my, uh, my, my recovery um, especially to my family, man. I I, I tortured my uh, my immediate family, my kids and and wife, and uh, and then all the uh, the people that had uh, that have helped me along the way to to um, just simply get me back, get me back in the sport, and get me back, uh, encourage me to uh, to to um, to to open that wing up again and uh, and try it. So and deal with me canceling on them because I kind of pushed out. So <laughs> I did that. Try acting. Last try year. acting. Right. Yep, I, did. So. <laughs> I, I, I was like, uh, I'm going to wake up at eight. What kind of excuse can I make? Because uh, I don't have any try acting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. And I just looked at the time. I cannot believe we've been talking for an hour and 10 minutes already. Hour and nine ah. minutes. Unbelievable. I mean, this just went by so quick. Uh, lots of questions, um, a lot of super chat uh, going on here. Will, can you say hi to everybody in the super chat? Because I've been trying to look at the, hi, super, everybody chat. In the super chat. And of course, uh, of course, that, I, <laughs> I should have known. I should have known. Will's going to be back. <laughs> uh, we're yeah, gonna be, uh, yeah, we're going to be spinning ahead. the spinning wheel of winny things. Will, if you want to say yeah. hi to everybody, make sure that everybody is on winny, winny. super or the spinning wheel. Thank you very much, Shane, for jumping on the the show and telling us this incredible story. And yeah. you are healthy. You are alive. You are flying. We're I, so happy that you're okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity, and and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, some somebody can can learn from my mistakes, you know, which uh, I, I guess the, the learning method would be, uh, you know, <laughs> hell, I don't know, take an SIV class, you know. <laughs> take Get, away, uh, absolutely, yeah, I, I think yeah. I think so. I know that um, I was flying for about six months before I took my first SIV course, and I was lucky enough during the SIV course to actually throw a reserve to feel what it feels like. Yeah. So uh, we collapsed wings, asymmetrics, uh, uh, collapses. We pulled A line collapses, B line stalls. We've done uh, all sorts of really cool stuff. And every time I go back, I do more and more and more and more advanced stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's that SIV, awesome. I think an SIV course a year is is pretty good. I mean, you know, and, and every time that you get a new wing, go to the SIV course with your new wing because that makes sense. Every, every class that I went to, I brought my newest wing for that year because I like to buy a new wing a year. Who doesn't, right? I mean, we're paramotor pilots. And I always get the 28 meters, but I went from a Spider. I'm sorry, the Roadster 3. Then I went to the Gin Vantage. I went to the Apco Lift EZR, and they all performed differently. 
which is weird. You know, we feel like if you're going to pull down and do an A collapse and let it go, or if you're going to do a spiral asymmetric, they're all going to feel the same. They're not. They are mm -hmm. not. Uh, Skinny Chef Shane was on the chat. I think he's gone. We went to one of the SIVs together and we did a horseshoe, which is very benign. We just take the A lines and we pull it down. It folds in the, 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 um, the wing to look like a horseshoe and it's very benign man i pull those a's down nice like i did before in the last sib and that darn thing collapsed i went into a riser twist i'm like what the hell just happened and it was mm. one of the scariest things that I've, that's ever happened to me yeah i was on siv course so if you guys get a new wing please uh go to an siv course with that wing to feel what it feels like when something like that happens shane i can't wait for you to go to siv course yeah I've, I, 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 I didn't mention this in the, in the show, but, um, uh, I was using, I was using Egypt, my trip to Egypt to either stay in the sport or just use that as my bucket list, checked it off and, and leave it. Um, but you know, I, I, I keep gaining health and strength and, um, and confidence back. So I'm in, so I'm going to, uh, I, you know, my next, my next step is to, to, you know, to start some of that better training better you know smarter training should i say um what i wanted to do is basically say when you buckle your buckle and you are flying how tight do you have it there and how in the world does it come off in a crash when it's still buckled obviously wow um, my, my buckle slipped my buckle went punk but so it, it it's not a great, great uh, buckle, but it uh, it basically came when I when I looked over at my my uh, helmet, you know, for my my one uh, picture, um, it, uh, it I had a the chin strap was loose. Funny thing, I'm still using the helmet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so anyone that's listening to us, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, you know, we. We, we, we know on the audio podcast, we have 62, almost 63,000 downloads and listens. Yeah. Um, we also have the audio and the and uh, uh, on a different one, we got the videos. So all the people that listen to our show, we just want to say thank you so much for listening to us. And if you're still listening to us after, what is it, two and a half hours? Man, you, you are, you're cool. Um, we, we, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I tell you what, after the show, I don't go back and listen to my show for two and a half hours again. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. John, I knew your voice long before I saw your, you know, saw your, saw you on video. So, I mean, most of the time I would listen. I mean, I, I just like tune in to the podcast, Apple Podcast, and as I was driving, listen in, and Linda, same thing. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah, I knew Linda. And then Will uh, said, when I grow up, I'm going to be like Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, he now, now Will's on two, now Will's on two podcasts. Well, three, actually, I'm sure, because you've been on. Be like like too, right? I've got to leave, guys. I've got some some uh, people here waiting for me at the house here. But I wanted mm -hmm. to thank you a ton for uh, for letting me be on the uh, the show. And, and awesome to meet all of you. Yeah, same here. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much, Shane. We appreciate thank you. you Shane. And uh, I see in your thing here, it says Shane Collard, adventure driven. I love it. I try to, you know, enjoy life as much as possible in every uh, way, shape, or form. Usually has to do with motors. So that's the driven. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome back anytime, Shane. Just yeah. Awesome. I'd love to be back. It was, it was fun. Yeah. Fun to uh, chat Come with you. Fun and hang with us. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll I do like it. Like David Proctor, he's on the panel, you know, as Scuba Steve, Jim, Will Fly. I mean, you know, we're anybody, anytime that you are a guest, you get to be on the panel. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll watch and, uh, and swing on by again. Thanks yeah, a ton, you're guys. You're a natural, Shane. You're a natural. Well, you I don't know about that. <laughs> you are natural. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thanks you so much. Appreciate you guys and uh, appreciate all you're doing. All right. Have a great hey. evening. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Hey. Take care, guys. Bye. Jane is awesome. If you guys haven't seen it, look down. He has a bio and some links. Um, anyway, our official sponsor is Jim Simard. Um, any words of wisdom from anybody before we say goodbye to everybody in Paramotor Land? Try acting.
Track. Track. If birds are walking, it's probably a bad day for flying. If what, Jim? If the birds are walking, <laughs> it's probably a bad day for flying. <laughs> I never that's thought right. of that, but that's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. If the birds are walking, don't go fly. You know what my rule is? If my hat flies off because of the wind when I'm out in the field, I don't fly. <laughs> so that's that's my rule. Well, that's and one way. Yeah. My rule, is, my rule is, if the wind blows my wing over, I won't fly. Mm. What do you, What do you mean if it blows it over? Like like you yeah, have have it up in a wall and it blows it over, or it blows the back, it blows the leading edge, the trailing edge up over, or it deforms the wing. Oh, yeah, I just, I mean, not that I can't fly. It's just yeah, I, it's not. I have a. That's just kind of okay. what I go by. Excellent. And you, there's and what you can do and there's what you want to do. After a point, it's it's no fun to just go up and be bounced around and <laughs> yeah. be a long, uh, healthy pilot. I'm staying nice yeah. and, and easy, not going up when the weather is not good and uh, checking. I also have rule two that if I fail three launches, something is wrong and I don't fly that day. Something is wrong. I don't know what it is. It is my equipment my head i don't know but um that's happened twice in my career so far i went out there failed three launches all right i'm done i don't know what happened but yep. i want to be safe too all i right. don't have anything uh, special to say like nothing special like what jim just said but i will say fly safe stay humble but have fun absolutely it's all about the fun really good there you go. excellent thank you for listening to the end if you enjoyed the show, please hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more, then click the subscribe button and you'll be notified when new ones come available. Have a great evening.
Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you something on the magic because on mine, I don't know how yours is. My trims are covered. They have like this black nylon covering around the trim. So I can't even see the adjustments. I have to feel for them and adjust it. Is yours that way or did you take that off? Uh, it was that way, but uh, I ended up just pulling them up over top of the metal buckles so that I could see and, and feel the, okay, that uh, makes the sense. actual trim. Because I, I was like, you can't see it on your where it showed it was broken. So I figured, oh, what happened? Yeah, and the uh, the other side is pretty seriously frayed. It's uh, it, it probably was was just about to go as well. The right one just happened to go a little bit quicker. Very interesting. 